Hey guys, what's up? And welcome back to You Nico Dev. Today we are going to be doing the third episode of the Firebase tutorials. We did a tutorial on the Firebase database, we did a tutorial on the Firebase authentication system, and now we are doing yet another tutorial on the Firebase authentication system, but today we will learn how to send confirmation emails to assure that the email the user is registering uh, with is an actual email and not a fake email. This should be a pretty simple episode, unless I completely mess up, uh, but the reason I'm doing this episode is because a lot of, pe uh, of people have been requesting more videos on this kind of content and I, I really love that you're liking this so I will keep making more and keep you informed of uh, you know new videos that are coming up in the Firebase saga we could say. Uh, we may also do a Firebase video on cloud functions, that could be really fun, but I still have to get more into them because I'm kinda new uh, to JavaScript or whatever they use to make functions. Anyways, let's remember what we did last time. As always, we are gonna continue the project of last time, so if you didn't watch the last two videos, I strongly encourage you to watch them, unless you know already what we are talking about, because it's gonna be pretty hard to keep up if you didn't watch those two videos. Anyway, this is what we did last time, so basically you can enter an email, any email, you can enter a username, and we're gonna, uh, yeah, I, I, okay, I, I think this email is gonna be fine. Actually, let me change it a bit, let me do test the test with two T's, because I think I already used this one, and we can enter a password, it has to be seven characters long, and then we can sign up. So once we sign up, we can, yeah, as you can see there is a new user on the database, and if we reload the authentication page, there is going to be also a new user on the authentication page. Now, I think I've already signed in, but let's reload the program just to be sure, so you know what's happening. Now, I can actually use the same email, I think it was this one, and I actually don't need the username, if I use the same password, we can sign in. And now we should be signed in, this means that we can submit our score. So now if we go to here, as you can see the score is going to be 58. We can also get the score of another user, right now there are not so many users, that is just me. Here you go, now we have this user so we can get, uh, we can reload the page and we can get the score of the other user. Alright, it works, so it was 81 at first, as you see, and now it's 58, because you know, uh, this is Nico uh, 2. Also, this is a little bit of a glitch system, because you can get the score of another user and then submit it yourself, but you know, this game is not supposed to be a, a real game, okay, it's just a test, so don't worry about that. So right now we're actually cheating, because as you can see, this user just copied the score from the- Oh no, that's not true, you actually get the score you had. So we did a pretty good system in the last videos, I forgot about it, as you can see my score is 81, even if right here it says the score is 58. So that's a pretty good system, okay, I'm proud of myself for this one. Anyway guys, now that we saw what we can do, I mean what we did in the last episode, I wanna get started on today's episode. So as you can see the email is not really a real email, but it still lets me get in. And this is not right, okay? You may say, Nico, why is this not right? Well, because someone can just randomly do like so many emails at once. You can do boom, sign in, boom, sign in. We are creating so many accounts right now, and this could actually be a problem because, you know, having so many accounts ah, is bad. I know people can still use like five minutes email, emails and all of those systems that give you fake emails. But at least, uh, by adding an email confirmation, we are going to limit the amount of spam. You can also uh, set like a, a, a limit of IP, like a limit of users with the same uh, IP address to limit the spam, but we are not going to be seeing that in today's video. Okay, so how do we implement an email verification system? This is extremely simple, okay? Alright, so this is the code we wrote last time to sign up a user. What it basically does is, it does a REST client POST request to a certain URL, and this URL takes care of everything and signs uh, up a user, okay? But from this URL we're gonna actually retrieve something, what we're gonna retrieve is a sign-in response, and this response is gonna have the local ID and the ID token. Now there's just one problem with this, we are actually setting the ID token and the local ID right away. So as you can see, we are setting them to these variables right here. We are taking them from the response of the, of the request, that is this one, and we are setting them into actually our system, in a variable. Now, when we are doing email verification, we actually don't want to do that. You may say, Nico, why? Well, because the user must first verify his email, 
and then, only then, he is able to sign in. So the local ID and the player name are fine, but what we actually need to delete is the ID token. So if you don't know what these things are, I'm gonna explain them briefly. We actually talked about them in the last video, but basically the local ID is a code that identifies the, uh, the user. So uh, one user can have a certain user ID, but there cannot be any user that has the same uh, ID of another user. So basically with this ID, we can target a user in specific. So as you can see, I use it right here in the database. As you can see, we have all of the users and then this is the local ID of the user, this one. So we can create different branches of the database uh, that are unique for each user. Now, this is actually not secret. We can actually store this without signing in. We can also store the username, but what we can store is the ID token. The ID token is basically a password that says, okay, this user is authenticated, let it pass, let him pass. If we actually store this, the user is gonna be signed in uh, without verifying the email. So I I'm tempted to just delete this code. Now the problem is we actually need uh, the ID token to actually store uh, the user information on the database as soon as we sign up. So instead of putting the ID token in a variable, what we have to do is we're gonna do something right here. We're gonna do string ID token temp to say that it's temporary and we're gonna make it uh, an empty string by default. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna check if it's an empty string and if it's an empty string, then we're not gonna use it. We are gonna use the one, uh, the default one, the one that is up here, as you can see. So we're gonna do, if it's an empty string, then id token tempt is equal to id token. Boom. And then here we're gonna use id token tempt. Oh my gosh, I messed everything up. Okay, so now when we go, where is it? When we go uh, here, as you can see, uh, instead of storing this, we're actually not gonna store this, we are gonna just copy it and put it away. And here in, uh, no, sorry, not inside in user, but inside app user, so right here, we're gonna put this away, and we're gonna do post to database, comma, this. So now everything should work. Alright, so how do we wanna do the email verification? The email verification is actually extremely simple. All you need to do is go to this website that is a really good website, it, like it's the reference website. It tells you literally everything you can do with Firebase REST client API. So I suggest you to check this website out. I'm gonna leave a link in the description, but this is where, you know, I get all of the uh, information about the tutorials. So as you can see, we're gonna go to the send email verification. And as you can see, when we went to sign up with email, we, all we basically had to do was uh, you know, copy this link and make a REST client request to this link. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna go to send email verification and we're gonna do this. We're gonna copy this link. We actually uh, need to copy it up to here, sorry. Because you know, we're gonna actually input the API key ourselves. So we're gonna do boom. And we're gonna go right here. So after the user is signed up, we're gonna do another REST client dot post request. And we're gonna put this URL right here. Boom. And the key is gonna be out key. So if you don't know what the authentication key is, uh, I'm gonna show you right here. I, I've talked about it in the last episode, but if you go in web setup, here, this is the API key. It basically, it's unique for your project. Don't show it to anyone, it's really secret. Right now, since I showed it on screen, you will actually be able to control my database and delete or add information to it. But, you know, if you want to do it, do it. This is just a test database. I actually want to test if any of you guys can actually enter the database. You know the API key, you know everything, you can just hack my database. Let's see if you do it. This was public for a long time and nobody ever managed to do that. So, you know, I, 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 I'm not confident that you guys are going to be able to hack my database, but you can try, you know, you can, you can try. Anyways, as you can see, it's red. You may say, why is it red? Well, because this is a post request and we're actually not posting anything. As you can see in this page, it actually tells you what you have to give the Firebase server. And what the Firebase server needs is the ID token that is something we actually have and the request type that must always be verify email. So let's create a payload that is similar to this. We're gonna do string email verification equals and we're gonna copy all of this information because it's gonna be really similar. So boom, boom, okay. And instead of email, it must be a request type. Yes, so let's copy this. And it says that the request type must always be verify email. 
So let's copy this code right here. So we can remove all of this and we can put verify email. There you go. And then instead of password, we have to put the ID token. Boom, ID token, which is gonna be the response.id token that we get from here. Response.id token. And we actually don't need all of this stuff, so we can just delete it. I think we can go up to boom here. Okay, so now this should be good. And then right here, we're gonna do comma email verification. Now, in this REST client request, we uh, sign up the user, and in exchange, the server gives us an object. This object gets pass parsed into a sign-in response, so we can actually get the local ID and the ID token of the user. And I'm stupid, I put all of this code inside in. It must be inside app, oh my god. Okay, so it must be here. Dude, it's really confusing, look at that, they are, they are literally the same function, and I'm getting confused. Guys, please don't do the same mistakes at, as I do, okay? So, as you can see, uh, now everything should be up and running. Alright, so you may have noticed that here, we are not actually retrieving anything, so we are not putting any object to pass. This is because uh, this URL, uh, the response of this URL, is just the email of the user, that is something we already know, and kind, that is basically the request type. Which is something we already know, because we actually sent the request type. So we actually don't need to get anything from this endpoint. And so, uh, and this is also because this endpoint just sends an email to the user. And then, all we have to do is confirm that the user actually clicked on the email, and if he did, then uh, we're gonna sign him in. But now, before doing that, let's actually check if the email gets sent. So let's actually, you know, run the code. And there is an error, and I forgot a semicolon. Ah, oh, look at that, it's right here. Alright, so now this time, we actually have to sign up with my own email, don't worry, this is not a, a private email, it's public, so, you know, <laughs> the, don't worry about it, I'm not revealing confidential emails. So we can do uh, the, the awesome password, sign up, and now, we are not actually signed up, we probably have received an email. So we're gonna check, and there you go, we actually got an email, verify your email for project, all of this stuff. So as you can see, it's gonna say, hello, follow this link to verify your email address. I'm so happy about this. Now, uh, before actually verifying the email address, what we have to do is actually customize a little bit this email, because, you know, your project blah 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 team is not really a good, you know, a, a really good thing, like, uh, what even is this? So, how do you customize your emails? All you have to do is go to, actually, where do you have to go? Oh yeah, templates, okay? And then you have email address verification, and we can actually edit this. Now, you cannot edit a lot of the stuff, most of the stuff must remain how it is, because, you know, to avoid the scammers, but still, we can, you know, change some stuff. So, like, the public name, we can call this project Fire, Firebase Tutorial, so instead of Hello Project blah 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 blah, it's gonna be Hello Firebase Tutorial. And then verify your email for app name. I mean, we can leave this uh, how it is. As you can see, we cannot change the message. To help prevent spam, the message can be edited. So, you know, that's cool. Can we edit anything else? We can edit the uh, email address, but whatever, we don't need to. So yeah, this is all we need to do. We can just hit save. That's the, literally the only thing we can edit. Oh, project support email. Well, we can put my email. Who cares? All right, so we changed this. And now we can go to users. Uh, so as you can see, my user is already here, okay? I have already a user, and it's here, and if we go to the database, the user actually has all of the information already, we go to real-time database, uh, right here, so it should be one of these, where, where is it? I think I called myself Nico, yes, so it's this one. Now, I could actually sign in right now, if I do sign in, and then submit the score, this actually works. The problem is, it shouldn't work, okay? I didn't click on the email, so it shouldn't work. So why does it work? Well, because we are not actually checking if the user is actually uh, verified or not. If the user, user has actually verified his email or not. We are sending the email verification, but we are not verifying if the user, you know, has received it or not, all of that stuff. So now we changed some stuff inside the app user, now we have to change some stuff inside the in user. So all we need to do is get the user information, okay, and see if the user actually has verified the email. Right here, if we go to, uh, where is it? Yes, if we go to get user data, we are gonna have this other URL that basically only requires the ID token, that is something that we actually have, and as a response, is gonna have the users. Now, users is gonna be a list of a bunch of stuff, okay? And this bunch of stuff is all of this stuff here. Now, out of all of this stuff, all we really need is email verified, which is a boolean. 
it's gonna return false if we didn't verify the email, it's gonna return true if we did. So basically all we need to do is check if this value is true or false, and if it's true, it's gonna let us through, so we're gonna be able to sign in. Awesome, now let's actually code it. Now this can become a little bit of a mess, okay, because it's a, it's a payload inside a payload, it's a, it's a list of JSON object inside a list of JSON object. This is gonna become like a headache, so let's make this in a really uh, fashioned and cool way, okay? Let's actually just go in the Unity uh, editor. Let's go here, let's go in the, yeah, let's go right here. Let's create two different classes. So the first one is gonna be user info. I don't know if I really did this. No, user info, this is right. And the second one is gonna be, where is it? Uh, we could call it email uh, confirmation info, okay? Whatever. Now we have these two classes, okay? We're gonna go in email confirmation info, we're gonna delete all of this mess. We're gonna delete the mono behavior and we're gonna add the serializable field. No, not this. Serializable. Okay, this is good. Okay. We have to do the exact same thing on user info, but let's wait, okay? So this is the email confirmation info. So basically what this is gonna be is gonna be this, okay? Sorry, just this, okay? So what does the email confirmation info uh, what uh, what do you have to have inside the you uh, the email confirmation info? Well, all we need to have is a list of users, like a list of objects called users. So all we can do is uh, public uh, user info, and we call it users. Okay, and this is gonna be uh, yeah, it can be just like this. This should work. Now, if we go in user info. All we, we have to do the exact same thing we did before, so we, let, let's remove, no, no, remove more behavior, let's add serializable, and now all we need to do here is the really variable we really need is email verified, so here we can do a public bool email verified. Now if I typed everything correctly, when we actually do a post request, we can actually put in the post request simply this, and, it, uh, and the REST client API is gonna just simply fill in all of these fields and actually get us the email verified variable. Hopefully I did it all correctly. So now, right here, we have to do another post request inside in user, and we have to do it to this address. Let's actually, uh, as always, only take this part of the address, REST client dot post, uh, we are gonna get as a response the email confirmation info, and then we're gonna do boom, and then we're gonna do uh, the out key, and then we're gonna do comma. Uh, what do we have to send? Okay, I think we only have to send the ID token. Okay, so let's create a payload. We can call this uh, string email verification, and we can do the payload. That is gonna be something like this. Okay, we can do it ourselves. Okay, uh, so something like this. Then boom. That is gonna be ID token. Then boom, then uh, comma, no, then uh, yes, okay, L let's not confuse ourselves, then this, and then the ID token, right? So then like this, and then plus plus, uh, sorry, you have to remove the, uh, the quotes, and then plus plus, and here we have to put the ID token, so response dot ID token. Is this right? Hopefully this is right. Okay, this should work, and then right here we can put the email verification. Now we actually have to do a dot then. So after this happens, if this actually works, we need to have another response. We're gonna call it the email response. Email response. Oh my gosh, the line is so big I'm lagging. Look at this. And boom. Okay, hopefully it's fine now. <laughs> and so now, oh my gosh. And now we have to make this code execute. This is actually the code that signs uh, us in. This code is only gonna execute if the email response is right. So we have to do if email response dot users dot email verified only in that case this is gonna happen and then just for testing if the email is not verified we're gonna say you are stupid you need to verify your email. Done. Okay this is maybe this may be like to mean. Maybe we're gonna remove it later, okay? But for now, this can be uh, good, okay? So now let's save our code and let's see if it actually works. Yeah, just looking back at the code to see if I forgot something. And yeah, this should be alright. Alright, so now let's actually input uh, by uh, email. And then let's input our really secure password that no one is gonna uh, ever get. And then let's sign in. You are stupid, you need to verify your email. Thank you so much. So if we do this, and go to boom, hopefully this works, you, your email has been verified. 
Good, my email has been verified, but now we have to check if, you know, we actually get that. So if we do sign in, uh, did we get the message again? Yes, we got the message again. Okay, well, apparently we're still stupid. Alright, I see what the problem is. So if you go right here, oh my gosh, no, if we go in, uh, is it right here? Yes. So as you can see, in the response, it doesn't put a user, but it puts users. It's a list of JSON objects. So it means that here, in the email confirmation info, it's not just a user info, it's an array of user infos. Now, I'm pretty sure that Unity uh, cannot parse arrays on its own, so it's gonna get really gl glitchy. So, uh, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's not gonna work, so this should be like zero. Yes, so what we need to do is actually implement uh, the uh, serializer. I think we already used it for something. Yes, this one. When we were getting the local ID of the user, we actually had to implement a serializer because we had to work with arrays, I think, or something like that. So now, yeah, with dictionaries. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but for this code, just to make it uh, clean and simple. So now inside the user, after we do the email confirmation, we're gonna have the email confirmation uh, response, we can call it. Oh, whoops, I messed it up. No, info, and then yeah, email response. All right, so what we need to do is a FS data. If you don't know what this is, this is basically a library we installed in the last episode. It's called FS Serializer. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. So, uh, FS, serializer, FS data, uh, how, how can we call it? Okay, so what we need to do is FS data, uh, email verification data equals fs serializer dot uh, parse json parse i think it was yeah it's not fs serializer it's fs json parser dot parse uh, the response that we actually get now since uh, we are gonna pass the response ourselves uh, the rest client api is not gonna do it because it's stupid and they cannot uh, parse arrays we're gonna actually remove this so we get the response as a json so we're gonna parse the response uh, response dot text And the response is actually called email response, so let's go email response. Awesome! So now this variable right here has the response parsed. But now we have to parse the response as an object. And this object, you guessed it, is gonna be email confirmation info. So let's create a new object, email confirmation info, we can call it email confirmation info, then it's that new email confirmation info. This is awesome. And now we can do serializer uh, dot try deserialize and uh, the email confirmation data uh, out the email confirmation info. Okay, sorry, it's a ref email confirmation info. Boom! And now, uh, this email confirmation info, if it worked, is gonna try to deserialize this. Now, just to make sure that it always works, we're gonna do a set success without warnings. Don't worry about that. And as you can see, now we have email confirmation info that, if everything worked, is gonna have the response. So instead of, uh, instead of here using email response, we're gonna use email confirmation info. So the reason why we are always getting the first user is because, you know, this list of objects always includes only one user. I actually don't know why it's a list, like why it's an array. Maybe it's just parsed as an array, but it's always only one user. So we need to do all of this mess just because, you know, uh, it's parsed as an array. So now perhaps it should work. So basically if you're wondering all of this code and you're confused about it, uh, basically it does the same exact thing that this REST client API does, but we do it manually because, you know, arrays are weird and um, Unity cannot serialize them. I already tried. So let's see if now it actually works or if we are still stupid, because, you know, if we are still stupid, it's not gonna be a really cool content, okay? Hopefully we are not. Hopefully this is gonna work. Please, tell me that it's gonna work. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Sign in. Okay, it's not telling me that I'm stupid. This is already progress, okay? Now we have a score of 27. We are gonna go into our beautiful database. We are gonna go here. As you can see, we have a score of 58, which is bad, it's evil. No, this is not the right account. Yeah, we have a score of 28. <laughs> we're gonna lower, lower our score a little bit. We're gonna do submit. And yes, it's 27. Oh my gosh, this works. So excited. So now, just to make sure, we're gonna actually delete the account and do everything again. Boom. And it works. Okay, 100% works. Finally, it took me a while to verify because I was dumb. But finally, it works. So this system is 100% fail-proof, you're gonna get the email, only if you verify it, it's gonna, you're gonna be able to submit the score. Awesome. Okay, so this is all I got in store for today. Thank you ever so much for watching this video to the very end, and in the next episode, perhaps, we're gonna do a system to change the user password 
email and all of that stuff so that uh, you know a user maybe we can do even a forgot your password system or we could do an episode about uh, remember password or all of, of all of that stuff that actually can uh, you know remember the password on your computer or you know do a forget your password system we can do that in the next episode if you guys like or if you want to see more stuff on Firebase, you can tell me some suggestions about what I could do next. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this video, hope you learned something, and yeah, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. See ya! Oh yeah, and also leave a like if you liked the video, please. I, I need likes, okay? 